Nepal, over a million children are engaged in labor. Many of them in exploitative and dangerous work in brick factories. A booming multi-million dollar industry, there are more than 1,500 registered brick factories across the country. The law here strictly prohibits the employment of children under the age of 14. Yet, around 10% of the workers in brick factories are underaged. We have evidence of at least 87 children under the age of 14 working in these six factories. Some of them are as young as five years old. Pretty much everywhere I go, there are so many children, some very young, working at all sorts of businesses. And no one's even trying to hide it. Ratahat district in southern Nepal has the largest number of brick factories in the country. Arvind is 11 years old and works here from dawn to dusk. So does his 13-year-old sister, Sangeeta. After the death of their father a few years ago, the siblings became their family's breadwinners. How long have you been doing this for? Three months. How many days a week do you normally work here? So I've been. Every day. Why do you work here? With no set hours, the workers are paid by the brick. How many bricks do you make usually in a day? Yeah, the things are. Two to three hundred bricks a day. How much do you get paid? So it would take him four days, working over 10 hours, to make roughly seven US dollars. That's only 175 per day, less than half the national minimum wage here. Lower pay is one of the main factors that makes employing children attractive to businesses. Who taught you how to make bricks? No proper training and poor working conditions mean injuries are frequent. Arvind hurts his toe. Do you often get injured or hurt yourself when you're working here? Arvind is also exposed to a huge amount of dangerous chemicals emitted by the kiln chimneys, which can cause a variety of lifelong respiratory, cardiovascular and neurological complications. He's taking me to that factory next door to introduce me to some of his other friends who work in these factories. According to a UNICEF report in 2021, there are an estimated 17,000 child laborers working in Nepal's brick factories. These bricks are reported to have been used in international development projects funded by the Asian Development Bank, the UN, the UK and the US. Hello. <laughs> Eight, fourteen, twelve. All below age of employment. See how much tola make a bate is a gorilla. Hello. Hello, guy, no? 
He's six years old and he's been working here for a year already. That's his mom? Choti, choti ma. Bap ne ke. Mwar gile bhi maari raha hai. Brick factories are only the tip of the iceberg. Fueled by poverty and corruption, nearly one in seven children in Nepal are engaged in various forms of labor. Filmed on our smartphones, these are underage children working in kiosks, shops, hotels and restaurants. Many of them are living away from their parents and some have been trafficked across the border from India, making them more vulnerable to some of the worst forms of exploitation. According to the police, there's only been one case of prosecution for child labor in the last two years. Nepal's government has ratified many national and international policies to combat child labor and has pledged to eliminate it by 2025. Yet, the budget allocated for inspections focused on the issue was $3,400 last year, with only 10 inspectors for a population of over 30 million. Back at the brick factory, like every other day, Arvind is hard at work. Who told you to come to work? Why not? Do you ever feel angry at your mom for making you go to work? It's going to start raining soon and they can't make bricks when it's raining, so Arvin has to go home which means no money for him today. Arvin lives here with his mom and two teenage sisters. They're part of an entrenched caste system. As Dalits, or the so-called untouchables, this family is at the bottom of the hierarchy in their Nepalese society. The Dalits are often thought of as dirty, not allowed to spend time with, touch, or even drink from the same well as the upper caste. Mango? Mango. Okay. <laughs> Mmm, very good. The Dalits are mostly unskilled laborers with no assets, trapped in a vicious cycle of poverty. The highest rate of child labor is prevalent among this caste. <laughs> Did you ever go to school? No. No foreign literacy. Here, primary and the first part of secondary education is compulsory. Yet Arvind has never been to school, and he's not alone. One in five children in the country between the ages of 5 to 12 are estimated to be out of school. 
What would happen to you and your family if RV stopped working? As a mother, how does that make you feel? When it comes to child labour, it's easy to blame the parents sending their kids to work. But in reality, the situation is so much more complex than that. There are so many factors leaving people in the desperate enough position to make their kids go to work. And on top of that list is poverty. It's election time across Nepal. Time for citizens to choose their local governments for the next five years. Highly powerful local bodies don't just execute the law, but they have the power to make new ones as well. Voters in election rallies from across the district are showing their support for their chosen candidates. During the course of our investigation, Vice World News found out that the brick factory, which employs Arvind, is owned by a local politician named Rambabu Prasad Chowdhury. He's clearly very popular. Look at all these people standing here pushing through just to be able to get a glimpse. And he's campaigning to become the next ward chairperson of this district. So, if you win this position, you're going to have a lot of power. Do you think someone who doesn't follow the law themselves should become a politician or even run for elections? Employing children in Nepal is a criminal offence and we have evidence that there are at least 18 children working in your factory in this ward. Why are you breaking the law? I can show you. Look, this is your factory, right? Mm, yeah, yes. see? Children working. What is he doing here then? That's not true. But that doesn't change the fact that you employ children. Over the course of an hour-long interview, and despite me showing him videos of children working in his factory, Rambabu continues to insist that he doesn't know of any children working for him, and that if he's elected, he wants to improve the livelihood and education of the community. A few weeks after this interview, Rambabu won the elections. While waiting for politicians like Rambabu to take real action against child labour, Children like Arvind are being helped by local charities like Arsansa. Mukesh Shah is its country representative, managing their various projects across the country. Mukesh proposes a deal to Arvin's mom and the parents of other children the charity has found working in the factories. The negotiation is not an easy task, and not everyone agrees to take part. 
A lot of the families here say they aren't aware that child labor is illegal and that they don't think it's harmful to their kids. For them, it's been a common practice for generations, deeply rooted in their community. These are the mothers who agreed to be a part of Mukesh's deal, to let their children go to school instead of work in exchange for a financial incentive. From now on, once a month, these mothers are gonna come and queue up here just like this to receive the equivalent of what their children earned in rice. Why rice? Because um, this is the main essential things that they need to buy actually. So they will have not any financial load and sending them to school. Then all we say is support them every month. This is the way for the charity to not only fill that financial gap, which is the main reason these mothers say they send their kids to work in the first place, but to also make sure that they continue going to school as the continuation of this payment depends on class attendance. How is this support going to help you? How do you feel about that? Today, the team from Arsansa will get the children out of the factories. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Ready? Ready. Sabita, Ramshila, and Sonila are all former child laborers themselves. Arvind and a number of the other children are brought out of the factories and told that they no longer have to work. Some of them are in this car, some of them are in the other, and we are on our way to the classroom that's been prepared for them. There are at least 67 more children, identified by the charity, still working in the six brick factories near the village. In the coming months, the Arsansa team plans to get them out too, and eventually, using the evidence they've gathered over the months, take legal action against their employers. walking through the gates of their new school. A first for Arvind and many of the other kids. Most of them have never received any formal education. To bring them up to an appropriate level for their age, the charity has prepared a transitional class for the new students. We give education, psychological counseling, family support, family counseling, and slowly actually, when it thinks the children will be prepared in three to six months, then we will try to move them in the normal school. We will again then grow up and support them to go and for the higher education. Thank you. 
नान जेल है वही है अभी के जमाना में पढ़ाई जरूरी बन ना पढ़ल जाए दुख हो तो मर जाए और काम कर जाए के बाद की पढ़े के बाद यही में थिंग सब दिल पर हाथ होता कोते दिल में पढ़ाई कर रहे हो वो अब हमने सब चिल्ली में ना जाने पड़े आए अब हमने चिल्ली में ना जाए 